Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an ILS approach in the Cessna 172 with the G1000 NXI. Coming up in this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So I first would like to go over what we're going to be covering in today's video. We're going to go over all the preliminary steps on the ground before we actually fly the ILS. So we're going to go through the process of entering the flight plan, the procedure, and then setting the ILS frequency. Once we have all that finished, we will depart the airport, and then I will meet you guys back on the ILS approach. If you have any questions along the way today, please post them down below in the comments, and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Oh, and by the way, this is not a procedural flight, so we're not going to be going over all these specific procedures of flying the Cessna 172. This is going to be geared more towards how to fly the ILS with the G1000 NXI. So now that you know that, let's hop down into the G1000 and get everything programmed. First thing that we need to do is hit the FPL button and that'll bring up our flight plan menu. Once that's up, we can use the scroll knobs down here by pressing in on the inner scroll knob and that will activate our cursor at the top. Once the cursor is populated, we just need to use the outer knob to scroll down to the line below the origin so that we can enter the origin information. Once there, we can roll on the inner knob and that will open up the waypoint information here. You also see this little keyboard icon. We can just give that a left click and now we can use our keyboard. The departure airport is MYX4. Once that's done, we just need to go down and hit the enter button to accept that. We're not gonna pick a runway, so we're gonna hit enter. Now we're gonna go down to the destination airport. Again, we're gonna use the outer scroll knob to scroll down to the line below the destination. And then we can use the inner scroll knob to roll to the right to open up the waypoint information here. Again, we can hit on the little keyboard icon. And then we're gonna type in our destination airport is MYNN. Once that is complete, we can go down and hit the enter button. And in this case, we do know the runway that we're going to use. So we can then select that and then hit the enter button. Hit enter one more time to confirm. And we have our route set in. Once that is complete, we can then enter the procedure while we're still here on the ground. So we can go over to the proc button. We're going to give that a left click. And then we're going to go down and select an approach for this airport. We're gonna highlight approach, hit the enter button. It will allow us to choose which approach we wanna use. We're gonna be using the ILS-1 for today. So we're gonna hit enter on that. The next thing it's gonna ask is what transition do we wanna use for today's approach? Now we went over this in another video of whether to use vectors to final or a vectors transition. I'll leave that video down below in the description or you can click on the link up here. So that being said, we are not going to use the vectors transition here. Instead, I'm going to use the Hinzy transition. A lot of people may ask, well, how did you figure out to use that particular transition? Well, if you scroll through all of them, and you can use that using the outer scroll knob at the bottom, it will show you each of the different transitions. Now, I already know that I'm going to be coming over here from the west over to the east, so... I'm not gonna pick any of the ones that are gonna put me out of the way. I also considered using the major transition, but I may not even be up to altitude yet as we're only 28 nautical miles from the destination airport. So once you have that selected, we're gonna hit the enter button. We can also choose if you want to set minimums here, we are going to bypass that. Below the minimums is the primary frequency, and this is the frequency for the ILS approach. This is what you're gonna to need to put either in your NAV1 or NAV2 radios, depending on which one you're gonna be using to capture the localizer. Now, one of the cool things that the G1000 NXI does is that once you scroll through all of these and go to the bottom and hit the load, if you take note up here at our NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies, when we hit the enter button here, we're gonna say yes to the lawyer language and it will automatically populate that information. Okay, so now that that's done, we can get the flight plan off the screen 
And we are set to get this plane off the ground before we uh, lose some power here. So we'll hit the standby, hit our beacon, let's hop over here to the PFD real quick and take a look at the screen. Now you're gonna see right up here by our altitude, we have 2000 and that's gonna display our first flight restriction on today's route. So before we take off, let's set up the autopilot information to get everything ready. So we're gonna set our initial altitude for 2100 and then I'm also going to set my climb speed to about 80 knots. All right, so we got everything done. We have the autopilot set up for GPS mode. We have it set up in flight level change, set at 80 knots to climb to 2,100 feet. I've already set the barrow, so we are set to go. I'm going to activate the autopilot and then that should turn us to meet our GPS course. Okay, so while we're ascending to 2,100 feet, once we get closer to the approach, I'll bring everybody back and fly the ILS. Okay, so another thing I just wanted to go over with everyone before we get lined up on our approach is the CDI button down here. This is what's going to allow us to switch between GPS and nav modes. So if for some reason the GPS doesn't automatically switch over for you, which I think it should, but if it doesn't, you're gonna need to manually switch this over into nav one or nav two mode. You just have to make sure that whichever one you do use, you have the correct nav frequency for the ILS that you're gonna be flying. My nav one and nav two frequency, I have both. So I could use either nav one or nav two in the CDI. We'll show you how that works here in just a second. Uh, it looks like we are just coming around to make our turn to line up on the approach. So I've already got us down to 2000 feet. And again, you could always use that VNAV feature to get you down there if you are way above. Now you can see we have the glide slope that is now populated over here next to the altitude. And to the right of the altitude, we also have the magenta arrow. That's gonna tell us what rate of climb or descent we're going to need to input into the aircraft to maintain the altitude on the glide slope. So what I think should happen here is once we make this roundabout, the GPS should automatically switch over into nav one or nav two mode. So let's see if that happens here. Oh, there we go. So the GPS automatically switched over into localizer mode and we are now capturing the localizer for the ILS. But just because we have captured the localizer for the ILS does not mean that we had captured the glide slope for the ILS. So if we take a look at the glide slope here to the left of the altitude now, you can see that our glide slope beacon or the little, little diamond is way up to the top. So we are pretty well below the glide slope at this point. So what we wanna do now is maintain on the localizer course until that glide slope comes down to meet us right in the middle for our altitude. Once the glide slope diamond does come down and meet us in the middle, at that point, is when we want to activate the approach mode. If you do activate the approach mode before the glide slope comes down, in some situations, the aircraft may try to ascend to capture the glide slope. So that's why it's just a good idea to wait until the glide slope comes down to meet you at your current altitude. I hope I explained that well. And if you have any questions, please post it down below in the comments. The little glide slope diamond is coming down to meet us right at our current altitude at 2,000 feet. So once we get there, we're just gonna head over to the MFD side and hit the approach button. So we're pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate approach mode now. You'll see the little glide slope icon show up in the, there it goes, in the autopilot. Once it does lock onto the glide slope, it will turn green and start blinking. At this point, if you had any VNAV programmed in, or if you have any altitudes or vertical speed or any of that, this will override all of that and it will automatically follow the glide slope all the way down. 
So at this point, we're just going to pull out some throttle and ride this all the way in. If you're enjoying the video so far, go down below and smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel out. I'm not sure if anybody noticed, but I forgot to put my flaps up when I took off, so... Yeah. But like I said, this ain't a procedural video, so... Don't hurt on me too bad. One of the other cool things with this plane, if you're unsure when to add in flaps, to the left over here, you'll see a speed number, and this is the speed in which you can input that amount of flap. All right, so once we're about 500 feet off the ground or so, I'm gonna deactivate the autopilot. We're just gonna take it all the way in by hand. Now you can tell by the poppy lights over there to the left, we've got three white and one red. So that's telling us we are just a little bit high. The thing to remember about the poppy lights, two red, two white, you're all right. All right, folks, that's it for today. If anybody has any questions about today's episode, please post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.